My opponent is the audience. My job is to beat them up as bad as I can, and I'm just beating them up with jokes instead of gloves, man. Before Steve Harvey became the host of The Family Feud, making it the second most watched syndicated daytime show in the world. See, I didn't know we could cuss, Steve. <laughs> I didn't know we could cuss, <laughs> now I'm trying to be <laughs> Don't you put your damn hands on me no more. <laughs> Before he amassed over 3.5 million followers on Twitter and over 1.3 million subscribers on YouTube. Before Steve Harvey apologized to Asian men everywhere after slighting them on his talk show in what many considered to be a seriously racist joke. Excuse me. Do you like Asian men? No. Thank you. Before one of the original kings of comedy officially retired from stand up during a live pay per view comedy special filmed in Las Vegas. Thank y'all for 27 years. I love you. Thank you so much. Before Steve Harvey mistakenly crowned the wrong winner during the 2015 Miss Universe competition. I have to apologize. Before he made sure not to do it again in 2017. Steve Harvey came from very humble beginnings, a kid from West Virginia who would go on to try out many different career paths. He would sell life insurance, he would clean carpets, he would become an auto worker, and he even tried his hand as a boxer. Steve would do anything and everything on his path to greatness, even live on the streets while chasing his dream. From homelessness to amassing over a hundred million dollar fortune, Steve went from rags to riches, but it didn't happen overnight. And he had some pretty big setbacks along the way. Get ready guys, this one's a bit of a tearjerker. I will take responsibility for this. Now Steve's been getting a ton of media attention in recent years, and he's actually still haunted by his mistake from the 2015 Miss Universe pageant. I feel bad for Steve. As we all know myself, I never, ever, ever make a mistake. Like ever. What's going on guys, my name's Michael McCrudden, documenting the life and career of Steve Harvey, here for you on Before They Were Famous? Damn it. Who typed a question mark on the teleprompter? For the last time, anything you put on that prompter, Burgundy will read. You guys requested this video, in fact a whole bunch of you did. Be sure to let us know in the comment section down below who you want me to document next. Roderick Stephen Harvey was born on January 17, 1957 in Welch, West Virginia and he was named after actor Broderick Crawford. Steve was the youngest of five children to his father Jesse Harvey who worked hard as a coal miner, while his mother Eloise taught Sunday school and was a central figure at the community church. Steve was especially close with his late mother as is evident anytime she's brought up on one of his TV shows. I learned everything I know about survival with them dudes you looking at right there. <laughs> it's my mama's house. But if you're a fan of Steve's, you know it ain't always sad moments of reflection. There was the time he showed his high school prom photo, and he be pimping. Pimping! <laughs> All day! Pimping! When Steve was young, his family moved to Cleveland, where he graduated from Glenville High School in 1974, before heading back to his home state to attend West Virginia University, as well as Kent State University. He joined the prestigious Omega Psi Pi fraternity. Other famous members include Shaquille O'Neal, Ray Lewis, Creepy Bill Cosby, and Crying Michael Jordan. The fraternity is infamous for hazing controversies as several pledges have died during initiation and others have been severely injured to the point of organ failure. And a few pledges, well they were forced to eat dog feces or as Bill Cosby would call them, jello pudding pops. That's right. And you know what else? When you eat it, your mom won't give you the old evil eye. After dropping out of college in his third year, Steve went searching for a career. He worked a ton of different jobs, spending time as an insurance salesman, a mailman, and even as a pro boxer. Nothing seemed to fit, that is until October 8th, 1985, when Steve hit the stage for the first time at the Hilarities Comedy Club in Cleveland, Ohio. That's where he found his true calling and began his career in stand-up comedy. Cause fish just look at you and go, Performing on stage quickly became something that Steve fell in love with, but it wasn't paying his bills, leaving Steve homeless for long stretches of time, forcing him to live out of his 1976 Ford and shower and shave at public pools. The upside would be when he booked a gig, and then he would have a hotel provided. So you know, he was always looking for that next act. Steve finally received some help during these years from Rich and Becky Liss, two supporters who set up Steve with a part time carpet cleaning business and also some credit to help with travel arrangements. Steve eventually got to thank them properly. What? 
You bailed me, man. I, I never forgot it. Thank you, man. Okay. After years of rough living and time spent on stage perfecting his craft, it was in 1989 when he started to gain fame and making it to the finals of the second annual Johnny Walker National Comedy Search. However, it wasn't until 1993 that Steve started to make a serious name for himself in the comedy world. Harvey landed the coveted job as the host of Showtime at the Apollo, a nationally syndicated TV comedy show from the world famous Apollo Theater in Harlem. What do you do for a living? I'm a minister and... Oh! His stellar television performances caught the attention of TV execs who gave him his own sitcom. The WB picked up The Steve Harvey Show in 1996, one of the WB's first hit series, and the place where Steve would meet one of his best friends in the business, the legendary comedian Cedric the Entertainer. Thinking to myself, you know what Fetty Wap? Yo ass got one eye. You might not want to be on no goddamn motorcycle. You gotta have your peripheral when you own a goddamn motorcycle. Cedric alongside Steve Harvey, D.L. Hewley and Bernie Mac would go on to tour in 1997 as the Kings of Comedy. The tour was a smashing success and in 1999, the Kings of Comedy tour became the highest grossing comedy tour in the history of the United States, raking in an astonishing $19 million. Steve Harvey would no longer have to sleep in a Ford, having made enough money that year to literally buy a new one every single day, well, for like an entire year. He was doing okay. The huge tour caught the eye of legendary filmmaker Spike Lee, who wanted to turn the stand-up show into a performance documentary. Filmed over two days during performances in North Carolina, the film, which cost $3 million to make, grossed over $38 million in theaters. The original Kings of Comedy. <laughs> This propelled Harvey into superstardom and started him on the path to becoming the one man media empire that he is today. In 2000, Steve would go on to launch his radio show titled The Steve Harvey Morning Show, which started off as an LA broadcast show, but it quickly found itself nationally syndicated. But now, when you hear my name, the number one thing you'll think of is favorite daytime TV show host. <laughs> During all this success, he had his first major loss when his father passed away due to black lung disease, and Steve's desire to grow his brand was based on a fear that he would end up living in a Ford again. He continued to push forward with startup comedy and TV shows. When the Steve Harvey show was canceled in 2002, he booked a reality show called Steve Harvey's Big Time in 2003. That same year, he would appear on the big screen in a film called The Fighting Temptations, and this would lead him to appear in 2004's You Got Served, also in 2004's Johnson Family Vacation, and a 2005 appearance in the animated film Racing Stripes. With a full plate of film, TV, and stage work, Harvey began to write books, become a best selling author, and even started a dating website. However, it was in 2010 when Steve Harvey would get the role of a lifetime. Something a burglar would not want to see when he breaks into a house. Rob! Naked grandma! Naked, huh? <laughs> Harvey's take as the game show's host for the family feud made it more popular than it ever before. I think he replaced Al Borland, so makes sense. Making it the second most watched daytime television show on the planet. That's where I'm going to wrap up this video, but if you want us to continue telling this story, we could follow it up with an after they are famous. So let us know if that's what you want to see in the comments down below. And you can contact me via Instagram or Twitter, and we'll get that job done. My name is Michael McCrudden, thanks for checking out this video, I'll see you guys in another one, browse around, hit subscribe, boom!